Welcome to another Superior Health Wednesday with Jim LaJoy, Executive Director with Superior Health Foundation. We've been talking about a lot of different things. Uh, this morning we're going to dive into pilot projects for people that are just getting started. If you want to walk us through what these pilot project grants are and who they're for. Yeah, well, well good to be here again, Ben. Um, so the um, uh, pilot projects, uh, really one of, uh, one of our, our grant initiatives that um, has really caught on and give you kind of a background on, on how these were put together. Years ago, these were kind of like mini grants. We were, we were providing funding for mini grants for organizations all across the Upper Peninsula. And what we were finding with uh, the mini grants is that people were requesting money for a much bigger project. So it really didn't fit into what we were doing. And our whole thing was we wanted to provide an opportunity for health center nonprofits across the UP to submit requests of up to $2,500. You have an idea. You have an idea with, with your health center nonprofit and you need some seed money and you need some money to kind of get it off the ground. And as long as it, you know, aligns with our mission, uh, you know, to improve the health and well-being of people across the UP, and we um, uh, provide that funding. And the whole idea behind this is, let's say you have a good idea and we provide funding for this pilot project and that project is successful. We want to hear from you on the success of that. And then you have money to start the project. Well, now you need continuous funding and additional funding to make sure that it's sustainable. So we encourage those individuals and those groups to come back to us in the spring or fall and ask for larger sums of grant dollars to keep that going. So it's really been a kind of a win-win, but there's, I think there's still a lot of folks who are really unsure about what uh, the pilot project is and how we can help them. So you know, this is a great opportunity to provide some education for them. And if you have any examples of the kinds of people that have benefited from this, from these pilot grants already. Yeah, I can, there's a couple that come to mind, but one that I'd like to share is we did a pilot project um, probably about a year or so ago down in Dickinson County. There was a group that wanted to do a pilot project um, to address um, some of the um, uh, drug issues that they had in, in their area, particularly vaping. So they put together a pilot project where they did a series of ads, TV commercials, radio commercials, to kind of create this visibility about the harm that this could do to your body. And it was incredibly successful. They ran it on their Facebook page, and it really created a lot of awareness about the dangers of it. So we saw that, and I reached out to the individual who submitted the request, and I said, you know, this, this was the epitome of what a pilot project grant is. And I encouraged them to come back with a much uh, larger grant request, and they did. They came back with, I think it was around eight to $10,000, and essentially what that was was to create, uh, bring in speakers from across the region to talk to a number of students in a number of schools in the Dickinson County region. And that was a, a tremendous use of those funds to you know, bring in someone knowledgeable, to share the experiences of it. And the nice part about this particular project is it's replicable. You know, you can, we do something in Dickinson County, it's successful. Well, we could take that model and move it to Delta County, move it to Iron County, and really kind of do some similar things. So, you know, that that's one that really kind of stands out as a perfect example of a pilot project blossoming into something much bigger. And you touched on a few really good points. I think one of them, just people can take just that issue in their specific community and grow that. Uh, right. That it doesn't have to be, I mean, it might be a UP-wide issue, but they can tackle things just where they live just to get it started, see how that works. And it's, um, it's, it's a way to test that out, see how effective that can be. And the fact that you give them that ability after that, this isn't a one and done. 
Let's see right. how this works. Let's work with you. And then you have that follow up with them to, to do more with that and to recognize that potential in these projects. So you're not just, it's not, it's not a one-time thing for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's, that's the whole reasoning behind it to be able to provide that kind of funding to see where it's going. And then the flip side can happen too, Ben. You know, there may be something that, that you, uh, that we fund as a pilot and they discover, you know, this really didn't work out the way that we thought it would. But we, but but there's something here we might want to go in a little bit different direction with a different type of pilot project. So, you know, we're here to listen. We're here to answer questions and to see if something falls into that category. I mean, just uh, just this week, um, I received an email from a organization that had an idea for something, and it was basically a um, uh, it was a, a organization that wanted to do a research project um, on a particular topic. And I said, you know, that is really a, a great example of us um, potentially providing funding to do the research for it, see what that research comes out and, and what the results are. And then from that, if there if you identify a need that needs additional uh, grant funding, you can come back to us. So we pointed them in the right direction. They're going to submit it. And we'll likely review that in a couple of weeks at our next grant committee meeting. So, you know, those, those are those are what we're looking for, because what's what's interesting about this area is that people have ideas. People have really good ideas to solve solve problems, but oftentimes they don't submit it. So part of this whole idea of this awareness is you know, you've got an idea, submit it to us, and we'll take it from there. And I, I think that's really important. Just you you have an idea, you notice an issue that needs worked on, but maybe you don't know how to get it from that idea into something functional. It, right. Is that they can come to you because you work with so many other individuals and so many groups that you may have seen or heard something like that, that you can help cultivate that idea into something that you're able to provide funding for. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, and that's, that's the beauty of, um, of grant giving and the work that we do. You, you know, you see the seeds of ideas and how they sprout. And, you know, there can be ideas that, that start in an infancy and you have this idea, but you don't really know how to get there. Well, as part of that pilot project, you're testing it. You're testing to see, is this going to work? Do we have the necessary pieces in place here to make this work? And what we've seen with a, with, with a couple of grants is that they've submitted, they receive pilot project, uh, pilot project funding, and they use, that, they use that money to good use, but the, along the way, they discovered some other avenues and some other ways that it can be utilized for something bigger. So, um, you know, it's a, I think it's just a, it's a wonderful vehicle for, for people to take advantage of um, and, and to utilize because something can blossom into something really much bigger that benefits a large population. That's excellent. So if I'm at home, I have an idea. What's the best way to get in contact with you and let you know about that to start the process? Well, I, I, you know, if you have an idea, you, right on our homepage at uh, www.superiorhealthfoundation.org, uh, there's a, uh, a, a spot there where you can just pose a question or ask a question. You can do that. You can call our office, you know, 906-225-6914. You can ask for me. Happy to help you. You can email me at jlajoy at superiorhealthfoundation.org, and we'll have that discussion. And... You know, as, as we've discussed before, if it's not something that, that qualifies as a pilot project, I'll tell them that. But it may qualify for something else. You know, it may be an equipment grant. It may be um, uh, a spring or fall grant. But not everything's going to fall neatly into that box. But we're here to help, you know, sort through that and provide the avenue to, um, you know, get their project moving. 
you have a lot of really direct resources to make this as non-intimidating as possible and a very approachable so that people with ideas don't get hung up on some of the the details and they can really just help push their ideas forward. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and we've tried to make, you know, the 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 uh, process for applying for pilot projects is really quite simple. It's an online application form. Um, you know, if someone is serious about a project, it's probably going to take you 20 minutes to a half hour to, to fill out. It's not a big deal. And we don't want it to be a big deal. You know, we don't want to get, we don't want people to be drowned in paperwork. You have an idea, we want you to submit it. And, and if we don't have everything that we need with it, you'll get a, a, a call back or an email from us that we're missing some pieces to it. But at the end of the day, you know, some of these projects um, uh, could sprout into something really transformational in the Upper Peninsula. I mean, we already talked about, you know, how one was used in Dickinson County for vaping. That is, a, that is just an excellent example of taking um, seed money starting off with some surveys and doing some uh, promotional advertising and then actually providing hands-on um, educational sessions to help children and with with choices and that is that's phenomenal that's the type of thing that we really like to see and all that wouldn't be possible if they hadn't made that first communication first applied for that and just started the conversation with you all Absolutely. And, you know, we, we've talked about this before, Ben, you know, one of the biggest frustrations I think sometimes we have in the grant giving business is that I will be out and about and I will run into someone and we'll have a discussion and they'll say, you know, I was going to submit this grant, but I didn't think it fit. And I said, well, what was it? And we'll have a discussion and I'll look at them and I'll say, you know, that probably would have fit in one of three, three, four different categories. If you're on the fence and you don't know, call us. We'll have that discussion. And, and, and sometimes we have those discussions and it may not be a fit for us, but you know what? We'll do our best to point them in another direction to another nonprofit where they could potentially get funding. Cause we're all about, you know, helping people. And, and that's the bottom line. So if you if you have big ideas, don't be afraid to share them. Uh, there right. is help available. Uh, right. Is there anything that we haven't talked about you want to make mention of as far as the pilot grants or the pilot project? No, I I think the, the only thing that I would like to mention is the pilot project grants. We give those out monthly, so we have grant committee meetings monthly. So it's not something that we do once a year, twice a year. We we award. We've awarded grants um, monthly. Sometimes we have projects, sometimes we don't. So we just encourage people to apply, get out there, um, put it in, and uh, it will go under discussion. And, uh, and, and usually once we make a decision, that organization will know within uh, two, three days of um, whether they were funded or not. And if, uh, and again, if it, if it goes up for review like that, if there's, before it goes up for you review, there would probably be conversation beforehand to make sure it has its best shot. Is there any way to reapply and like reconfigure if what you had the first time doesn't get approved? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And, uh, you know, one of our mantras that we like to say here with Superior Health Foundation is we don't like to say no to grants. We like to say not now. And what we mean by that is it may be a great idea, but you're missing some pieces in your grant. You may have missed a budget. You may have missed a, a needed letter of support. There may be a piece in there that just doesn't align with our mission. So oftentimes when we look at those grants, we'll say, you know what? This has a potential to be something, but we're going to table it for right now until we get further information. So it's, it's my job then to go back to them and say, hey, um, you've got the, um, the pieces here of something really good, but we're missing that information. So we need this and resubmit it next month and we'll review it again. Perfect. Well, I mean, that is a, that is a great level of support and hopefully that is a comfort to people uh, that we're eliminating all those hurdles for them to get connected with you and to get their projects off the ground. So absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, 
uh, for this Superior Health Wednesday. Jim, thank you for as always, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you so much, Ben. Thank you.